but I think it's important to understand the difference between short-term fatty acid oxidation and fat loss. And so what we really wanna look for is fat oxidation over the course of a 24 hour period. Just because you burn one substrate during a session doesn't mean that that substrate oxidation will stay elevated over the course of the 24 hour day in the post exercise window. And so that's what's unique about this group in Japan. I'll link the studies below. They're using indirect calorimetry and they're showing that fasted cardio does improve 24 hour fatty acid oxidation, fat oxidation, again, as per indirect calorimetry, only when it's done before breakfast after a 12 hour fast. All right, so we got some science to review. Today we're gonna to talk about fasted cardio versus doing cardio in a fed state and what it does to your fatty acid metabolism. Does it matter? Can you enhance 24 hour fatty acid oxidation if you do cardio in a fasted state versus if you do it in a fed state? That's kind of what we're gonna talk about today. And let me just pause and thank you for showing up. Thank you for being here. I'm Mike Mutzel with highintensityhealth.com. If you're not yet subscribed, you definitely wanna do so because we do videos like this, plus we interview experts to give you cool insights when it comes to metabolism. Now, I'll just say, uh, I wanted to present this to you in a very unbiased format. I personally am biased. I think that fasted cardio does enhance 24 hour fatty oxid oxidation. I think it is a little bit more superior to fed cardio, but I, I want to look at this from you know, an objective standpoint and really look at the data. So that's what we're going to do here today. I will say, if you want a, to see a related video, Jeff Nippard posted a video about a year and a half ago I saw, and he talked about this as well, but he didn't review, and this is not a knock on him, I'm just saying this like the sky's blue. He didn't review the data from this group in Japan by Kyoto Awayama. I hope I'm pronouncing this researcher's name right. He's published over five studies in humans. Now, these are short duration, 24 hour studies where they're, they've compared in both men and women in different studies. And let me just say these articles were not published in low tier journals. One was in Plus One Biology. Another one was in Journal of Applied Physiology. Uh, another one was in eBiomedicine, Journal of Metabolism. So these aren't like low impact journals. These are legit studies. Long story short, what they found in a bunch of different cohorts in a course of a 24 hour period in a metabolic ward sort of you know situation where they're uh, assessing 24 hour energy expenditure through indirect calorimetry, they've shown that a one hour exercise session in a fasted state increases fatty acid oxidation over the course of 24 hours, but the same duration of cardio after lunch, these individuals did not notice an increase in the subjects in terms of their 24 hour fatty acid oxidation. So this is important because if you hear any videos from Lane Norton, Andy Galpin, any people in the strength and conditioning community, they're gonna say fat oxidation does not equal fat loss and weight loss. And you know, I think this is a good reason why it's good to open up your mind to different ideas because in the ketogenic diet community, what we often hear, because we see great researchers like Jeff Volick present, and he'll show, hey, if you exercise in a, in a, if you're a ketogenic athlete, fat adapted athlete, and you exercise, you burn a lot more fat for fuel. You, you know, he showed the amount of glycerol turnover is almost double in the fat adapted endurance athletes compared to the carb, you know, heavy um, fueled endurance athletes, right? So the natural thinking is that well, you can burn more fat over the course of a 24 hour period, but I think it's important to understand the difference between short term fatty acid oxidation and fat loss. And so what we really wanna look for is fat oxidation over the course of a 24 hour period. Just because you burn one substrate during a session doesn't mean that that substrate oxidation will stay elevated over the course of the 24 hour day in the post exercise window. And so that's what's unique about this group in Japan. I'll link the studies below is they're using indirect calorimetry and they're showing that fasted cardio does improve 24 hour fatty acid oxidation, fat oxidation, again, as per indirect calorimetry, only when it's done before breakfast after a 12 hour fast. When they do the same, when the subjects, both men and women in different studies that they've published, what they've shown is that if you do the same intensity, same duration of cardio or aerobic training, in a fed state after lunch, there isn't that same increase in 24 hour fat oxidation. So is that the end of the story? Is that all we need to know? No, that isn't because these are just 24 hour studies 
We don't yet know how the body will adapt over time. So let's review another study by Alan Argon and Brad Schoedfield. So this was a four-week study. This was four weeks duration. It was only women that were being studied. They had two arms of the study, I think. The average age of the woman, the female subjects were between 21 and 23, so they were young. 10 subjects in each cohort, I believe. So they had the fasted cardio group, they had the fed cardio group. Now, what they found is over the course of four weeks, doing three one-hour sessions, either in a fasted state or having a protein slash carbohydrate slash small amount of fat drink, it was a protein shake, and, and this is what's unique about this study that I like about it, is researchers watched the women drink the protein shake, they watched every cardio session. So again, this is, they did 12 cardio sessions over the course of a month, either in a fed or fasted state. Researchers observed this, so it was pretty controlled. So I think that's the good thing. What they showed is that there was non-statistically significant weight loss and uh, waist circumference difference in either the fed or fasted group. They were the same. So both groups, lost body fat, both groups lost waist circumference. And so the conclusion was fasted cardio offers no additional fat loss effect compared to fed cardio. Now, here's the thing that this study, unfortunately, and this is not a knock on the researchers, they just didn't include this. We don't know, uh, it, maybe I read the materials and methods wrong. I'll have to reread them another time. Uh, perhaps I'm totally missing something, but I could not find explicit instructions in the materials and methods of the study where, you know, we don't know how long the fasted group was fasted. So was it like don't eat for 12 hours or 16 hours? We, we don't know. And so I think that's what is different about the studies from Kyoto Aoyama in Japan is what they did is they they said, hey, look, you know, you know, if you're in the fasted cardio group, you're fasting for at least 12 hours, like everything was controlled. The downside of that study, actually all their studies, the Aoyama group in Japan, is they're only 24 hours long. So we don't know what happens over the course of a month, right? So it's great if you can increase your fatty acid oxidation for 24 hours, that's awesome. But what, what happens if you do this three days a week, four days a week, how does your metabolism adapt? So that's what's interesting. Now here, you know, the, so again, the, these are, there's a few other studies that have, here's the paper I was looking for. It's titled More Than a Store, Regulatory Roles for Glycogen and Skeletal Muscle Adaptation to Exercise. So this is interesting because I think if there's any unique advantage to doing cardio in a fasted state in terms of getting a, a blip in your 24 hour fatty acid oxidation, it has to do with digging a little bit of a hole of glycogen debt. So creating a little glycogen debt because that offers unique signaling. You see, when you hear people talk about calories in, calories out, they talk about, oh, you deplete glycogen, you just refill it with carbohydrates. But there's a lot of research showing that glycogen depletion triggers some brain to liver to fat tissue feedback loop, and it causes an upregulation in various carbohydrate response binding proteins and carbohydrate responsive genes and PPAR alpha and a lot of different, it kicks off basically a molecular cascade that has effects long after the exercise is done. So I think that's kind of what, you know, might, it may, may not be uh, just related to the exercise, you know, ca the calories that are burned. It's uniquely that you're digging a glycogen hole and perhaps, I'm not saying this is exactly what happens because we don't know for sure, but perhaps that glycogen debt create some sort of ricochet metabolic effect that over time causes your metabolism to burn more fat for fuel. And so there was an interesting animal model study where they actually looked at glycogen depletion in mice. And what they found is this, this so-called brain to uh, adipocyte to liver axis was upregulated and a bunch of different genes were turned on. So how does that translate in humans? We don't really know yet. But we do know that glycogen depletion kind of kickstarts, and a lot of other researchers have talked about it, this metabolic switch from glucose metabolism and fatty acid synthesis and so-called lipogenesis to fatty acid oxidation and ketone synthesis. So it could be the hypothesis of the benefits of the fasted cardio versus fed cardio is that you dig a glycogen hole that triggers unique signaling. And as such in the post workout window for up to 24 hours, potentially that you may be burning more fat for fuel. And I just want to leave you with this final study. And this is one right here. The title is exercise metabolism at different time intervals after a meal. So what's unique about this is uh, these researchers figured out that after a meal, there's some lipolytic suppression because in the post-meal window, there's a lot of energy around, glucose is around, and insulin is around. 
And so what happens is our fat cells kind of hang on to those stores. The so-called lipolysis that normally occurs in a fasted state or with exercise is inhibited because insulin, remember, promotes its an anabolic. Lipolysis is catabolic by, by, by nature, by definition, right? So what they figured out is that it takes roughly six hours after eating to, to create the same amount of lipolysis uh, that you achieve in the fasted state. And so if you're trying to, again, if you're trying to split hairs, I say do cardio when you can. Like if it works for you in the morning, great. If it works for you after work, whatever. You're probably not getting paid to be a bikini model or bodybuilder. I mean, with all due respect, maybe you are. And if you are, hats off to you. But most people are just trying to put, as Mark Bell says, put points on the scoreboard. Just get some small wins so that they can get some momentum and some inertia behind what they're doing. So if that's you and you're trying to split hairs and you know still you know optimize things, uh, you know try not to eat for six hours before cardio. You might burn more fat during that session and that might have more translative effects over time into fatty acid oxidation. Again, the title of this study is Exercise Metabolism at Different Time Intervals After a Meal, published in 1991, and they figured out that it takes about six hours after eating to equate the same amount of lipolysis and release of fatty acids uh, compared to a fasted state. So. That's it for me, friends. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, hit that like button. Please subscribe, and I would love to know your feedback. So hit the comment bar below and just let me know what works for you. Is it Do you do cardio fasted or in the fed state? I personally find, you know, I have a little green tea in the morning. I walk my daughter to school. I do the chicken duties. I do all this stuff. And I find that to be helpful because then I don't really have any calories until about, you know, 10, 10, 30. I have maybe a little bit of a bulletproof coffee. Then I, I usually have uh, like my first meal around 11, 30, 12, something along those lines. So that works for me, but I'm unique and different. You know, maybe you have lean, more lean muscle mass than me. Maybe you don't exercise. I don't know, but I would love to know your feedback. So hit the comment bar below. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. See you guys.